The balance in Awesome Noughts is a complete mess. The game was released in 2012, and as of right now, it hasn't received balance patches in about two years. Ronimo moved on to developing other games, so there's no hope of any balance changes happening at this point. But even when the game was receiving regular balance patches, the game had a myriad of balance issues. Characters that were completely unstoppable pushing machines, characters that could insta-kill you out of stealth on a 10 second cooldown, characters that didn't even need minions in order to destroy your towers, and then you had the underpowered characters. Characters that were well designed in their own right, that ended up being outclassed by other characters that did their own job better than they did it. And I know, I know, I'm screaming into an empty room on this one, you don't need to remind me, but we're not going to treat this as a plea to game developers for them to come save the game from eternal damnation or something. We're treating this as a case study. It's a case study on where game balance can get away from a dev team, on what happens when a game is left unbalanced for such a long period of time, and on how a new and innovative idea can end up turning into a balanced nightmare that is hostile to new players. So for anyone who doesn't know, Awesome Noughts is a game released by Ronimo Games in 2012. The core concept for the game is fairly simple. It's a mashup of two genres. It's a 2D platformer combined with a MOBA. It has the key gameplay loop of a MOBA, you push minions down a lane to get them in front of turrets and you destroy the turrets, and once you've destroyed enough turrets, you can destroy their base, winning the game for your team. But this gameplay loop has been shifted into a 2D platformer perspective. Instead of being an isometric game from sort of top down like most popular MOBAs are out there. Combine this with a cute and colourful art style when you've got a pretty charming game concept on your hand. And it was charming, it's a very very fun game. The matches were 3 versus 3. Characters still have abilities and basic attacks just like in other MOBAs, and they still have strengths and weaknesses mostly. The design concepts of a MOBA are all still kept intact, but given a new perspective that changes the game. And this idea, in theory, is very clever. It's similar to games like Smite or Monday Night Combat, which took the MOBA genre and turned them into third-person shooter games, making them something new and unique. But creating a 2D platformer has some interesting ramifications on the MOBA genre that making it, say, a third-person shooter doesn't have. It might sound painfully obvious, but being two-dimensional is a very impactful change on the genre, more than you probably realise. Awesome Noughts was plagued with characters with extremely powerful area denial. I went through and counted, and out of the 34 playable characters Awesome Noughts has to offer, I counted 19 of them having some form of area denial in their kit. Like it's slightly up for debate? Like, is this area denial? I would say so, but I'm not really so sure. But most of them aren't this ambiguous. Most of them are very obviously area denial. So just for the sake of argument, let's all agree on 19, just for the time being. Some of them have to buy their area denial as an upgrade in the shop, like Genji's explosive cocoon upgrade isn't there by default, you have to buy it with money that you earn from killing players. But most of these have it as default in their kit. And not all of these are particularly potent area denial abilities, like Skaldir's Gnome is pretty weak in terms of area denial, it's more intended to be a burst ability thrown up close. But most of the area denial in this game is not like this. It's very potent and takes up a very large portion of your screen. This means that it isn't uncommon for team comps to have three characters with extremely oppressive area denial tools at their disposal. If both teams have comps like this, then the game grinds to a halt. If only one team has a team comp like this, then that is the team that gets to play the waiting game. They only have to push when the enemy team is at a numbers disadvantage, and they can play extremely passive for the rest of the game. Now this wouldn't be an issue in other MOBAs like League of Legends. There's dozens of characters that can block off entrances and zone you out with large abilities and stuff like that in League of Legends. You could theoretically run a team of five area denial champions and the comp probably wouldn't even be that good. But League of Legends has the third dimension to work with. If Ziggs throws a minefield in front of you, most of the time you can just walk around it. It's only really powerful when it's used in a choke point like this. But Awesome Noughts doesn't have that luxury. 
Did you see the size of it? Look at how much of the screen it takes up. It's enormous, and you don't have the luxury of the third dimension to just walk around it. If you can't jump over it and you can't go under it, then you just have to wait for it to go away. If you don't, it can not only deal a very large amount of damage to your face, but it also sucks you in, meaning that the enemy team can just wail on you until you die, whilst you can't move. Individual characters' area denial strengths don't necessarily cause a problem, but it's the abundance of area denial that causes the problem. Burst Assassin characters that don't have some sort of dash or invisibility are essentially unable to accomplish much because they can't get close enough to get their burst off. They're rendered nearly obsolete by the enormous amount of obstacles that they have to overcome just to reach an enemy. This is exacerbated by the fact that Awesome Noughts doesn't have a pick and ban phase like most other MOBAs do. In League of Legends, you get into Champion Select, and you have the ability to ban out characters that you don't want to play against. Each team gets five bans. If you never want to play against Samira ever again, you don't have to. Not only that, but both teams have to pick in order, meaning that you can see some of the enemy team comp before you pick your own champion, depending on where you are in the pick order. Awesome Noughts, once again, has no such luxury, causing the issue to get even worse than it already is. Now the theory goes that Awesome Noughts was made to be a bit more of a party game than a game like League of Legends. League of Legends is intended to be taken super seriously, and the ranked ladder is taken super seriously. Whereas Awesome Noughts is a bit of a fun party game, right? So why does it matter? if it's way worse balanced and doesn't have a pick ban phase. Well, it matters because unbalanced party games aren't as fun as balanced party games. Smash Bros was designed with the intention of being a more casual party game style of the fighting game genre, but you'll still find people complaining about overpowered characters, and Nintendo still balance patches their newest game because they understand the importance of balance even in a party game. Awesome Noughts being taken less seriously doesn't mean that balance is somehow less important. Things being overpowered makes a game inherently less fun, regardless of how seriously you're meant to be taking the game in question. Awesome Noughts being two-dimensional makes the area denial thing a very big issue, but that's not the only problem that's caused by the lack of the third dimension. The maps are designed to be similar to more traditional MOBAs, where you have multiple lanes with multiple turrets on them all leading to the enemy base. But instead of being positioned, you know, in the three dimensions next to each other, the lanes are stacked on top of each other. But this causes a very strange issue. If you want to roam from top to bot, all you have to do is drop through a platform. It takes a maximum of three seconds to get from top to bot. But the developers clearly realised this, and they did address it. They added these, like, bumpers at the bottom of the map so that roaming from bottom to top would be just as fast as the reverse. And this is a start, but it doesn't really solve the problem that this causes. It means that roaming to join fights is extremely easy to do, roaming to destroy towers is extremely easy to do, roaming to- basically roaming is extremely powerful. Roaming being powerful isn't necessarily a problem in and of itself, but the issue is that certain characters can abuse the speed at which they can change lanes to push down towers with basically no counterplay. Lone Star is arguably the worst culprit for this. His bull lets him tank tower for his minions for a decent amount of time, and it pushes back enemy minions to prevent them from damaging your own minions. His dynamite and blaster make him deal quick work of towers and minions in general. And you can jump from top to bot so fast that in about 10 seconds you can deal massive damage to both towers without the enemy team really being able to catch you. If you keep a careful eye on your minimap whilst you're doing this, you can fairly easily avoid the enemy team entirely and be completely uninteractive. The moment you see them moving towards you, you just run away and go to the other lane. The enemy team is effectively forced to have one person sit at each tower in order to prevent this, but even that won't keep you at bay forever. Your chip damage on the towers whilst doing this same strategy will still eventually win out the round. There are a number of characters that can effectively abuse this strategy, and there's very little you can really do about it other than just go and do it yourself to the enemy towers instead. Now there are counterpicks to this, there are some characters that have a fairly good time stopping you, but since there's no pick or ban phase, you can't just counterpick the enemy, and you can't ban out Lone Star either. So you might just be out of luck if you didn't pick the correct champion 
to counter the Lone Star push, then you can't counter the Lone Star push. The fast-paced nature of a 2D platformer and the slow and methodical nature of a MOBA clash extremely hard due to things like this. Split pushing in Awesome Lots takes on a whole different meaning. In a game like League of Legends, split pushing is the act of pressuring a tower on the opposite side of the map to an objective to try and draw attention to yourself and give your teammates a numbers advantage on the other side of the map. In Awesome Lots, split pushing is essentially just attacking bot tower, then running away when the enemy team starts moving towards you and immediately going to top tower to attack that instead. Imagine if Jax had a teleport that literally had a zero second cooldown. And this is not the only effect that the 2D MOBA clash has on Awesome Lots. It limits the detailed strategy that the MOBA genre is so famous for by dumbing down core concepts to fit the 2D style. Wave management is a big part of both Dota and League of Legends. Trying to control and manage where your minions are in relation to the enemy minions is extremely important strategy to learn if you want to get better at those games. But in Awesome Knots, wave management is mostly non-existent. Not necessarily because the strategy couldn't theoretically exist, but due to the fact that it's basically impossible to draw minion aggro onto yourself, and it's extraordinarily easy to kill minions because it's 2D, so the minions are stacked on top of each other. Any damage that deals AoE will kill both of the minions. This means that any strategical attempt to manage the wave just gets met with a Yuri mine that instantly kills all of the minions that you stacked on top of each other, because wave clear is so powerful in a 2D environment. Not only that, but there's not really any jungle camps to speak of. The maps have to be fairly small in order to fit the fast-paced nature of the game that they're trying to create, so there's not really any room for a jungle like in other MOBAs, which removes a lot of the strategy that comes with jungling. There are neutral minions on the map in Awesome Lots that heal the player when they're killed, but that's nothing compared to the complexity of jungling in other MOBAs. This might be due to the whole party game nature of the idea that we talked about earlier. The idea which, in theory, sounds like a stroke of genius, the 2D platformer MOBA, actually ends up making the game an absolute balance nightmare. Awesome Lots is a very fun game, but if you want to take it even remotely seriously and try to win, there are very glaring balance issues that are directly caused by the format that makes the game so fun in the first place. But now I want to get to the stuff that most games have suffered from. Awesome Nauts is a unique case because it has lots of balance issues that are interestingly tied to the unique selling point of the game. But balance issues in most games are caused by developer oversights, power creep, and poor design choices in character and ability design. And Awesome Nauts is no different. Leon is an assassin character in Awesome Nauts. He has an invisibility skill that drops a clone of himself when used. He also has a tongue grab that allows him to pull enemies in towards him from a distance. This tongue grab can be used immediately out of stealth. Essentially, Leon is a character that can go invisible for a period of time and has a blitzcrank hook on a 7 second cooldown, and he does a very large amount of damage because he's an assassin. Even on paper, this character's kit is absurd. He has been heavily nerfed since back when I used to actively play this game. His stealth used to be infinite, then they nerfed it down to 60 seconds, but now it's 8 seconds. So that's a massive nerf, you can see how powerful it used to be. This character's mere existence in a match could slow down the pace of the game. Players who weren't playing tanks on the opposing team to the Leon had to be extremely careful when walking out of range of their towers in case Leon came strolling along and just insta-killed them and displaced them from stealth. Oh, and remember the clone that Leon drops when he goes invisible? Well, that clone could be upgraded in the item shop to turn it into an extremely powerful split-pushing tool. You could make it walk and have more health with upgrades in the shop. So it would essentially be an extra super minion in your lane, allowing Leon to either push two lanes at once, or to push one lane in particular very hard without even needing a minion wave. We talked briefly about Lone Star before. He's a tower pushing god. His bull knocks back enemy players and enemy minions, meaning you can have the most uninteractive game possible. You don't even have to kill the minions, you just infinitely push them backwards and attack the tower until it dies. 
Yuri was a very interesting, overpowered character in Awesome Lots, because in the hands of new and less experienced players, he was extremely weak. He basically just dropped mines in bushes and hoped that people walked into them and killed themselves. But a skilled Yuri player was completely unstoppable, pulling off all kinds of crazy body blocking tricks in order to drop mines directly on top of enemies and escape scot-free. In my first ever video on this channel, I talked about a similar issue to this. The video's terrible, I don't recommend you go watch it, but I talked about League of Legends having a champion called Azir. Yuri was a balanced nightmare for the same reason that Azir was a balanced nightmare. These characters have such high skill flaws that newer players playing them are completely worthless, but very skilled players are completely unstoppable. This means that you either have to balance them for a skilled player, or you have to balance them for a weak player. Balancing the character for a weak player means that the skilled player wins 95% of their games on the character. Balancing the character for the skilled player means that they're even more worthless for the weak players than they already were. The perfect characters are characters that are easy to learn but hard to master, and getting that balance right is extremely difficult, but having characters like Azir or Yuri in a game will cause developers a headache in the long run. Now, there are a lot of balance issues like this in Awesome Lots. Some are really big, some are really small, so I'm just gonna show you a handful of them now. Now, I don't want anybody coming away from this video thinking that I hate Awesome Lots. I love Awesome Lots. As an early adopter of this game, playing it in 2013 when I was just 14 years old, I had so much fun with this game. It has so much charm and I spent over 900 hours having fun with the game over the last 7 or 8 years. But the game was far from perfect, I even knew that back then, and it was plagued with balance issues throughout its history, and became increasingly more hostile to new players as the player base got smaller and more skilled and the developers started distancing themselves from the game. The game's got no chance of seeing a balance update anytime soon, but I think it's a pretty interesting case study into multiplayer balance and the impact that it can have on a game. This game might be dead and gone, but damn did I have fun playing this chronically unbalanced mess of a game back in the day. Thanks for watching.